preparing, recording. All right, so you guys, we have this lesson we're going to cover in two days because this same section here has um, the rules for building functions for linears, and it also has it for exponentials. So I just split it up so that we can do it one at a time. Um, but looking at this, I first wanted to like uh, ask, is anybody getting an allowance in here? And isn't a shame to say how much they get. How much you get, Nate? Allowance. Is it more than five dollars? Yeah. Okay. So that's all we need to know. <laughs> Guess how much I got in 1984. Guess. Five cents. Jeez, I'm not that old. <laughs> You allowances? <laughs> For chores, I grew up in a military household, so you better believe I did a lot of chores. Strict household. Guess how much I earned? I heard over here. Two dollars a week. Two dollars a week. Big spender at that point. Could buy a lot of candy with that. But uh, let's say at week zero. So after a week, I get two bucks. But if I'm just starting out at zero, how much money do I have? Zero. Zero. After two weeks, how much money do I have? Excuse me, after one week, how much money do I have? Two. After one week, I have two dollars. After two weeks? Four. 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 Big money. After three weeks? Six. Six. Four weeks? Eight. Do you see that this is a line? Because the amount that I earn every week doesn't change. So essentially what I have here is a step that goes, okay, from week zero to week one, my slope, my change, rate of change is up to over one. From two to four, it's up to over one. From four to six bucks, it's up to over one, up to over one. You see how the steps are the same? When the steps are the same, the slope is the same. Essentially what I do is, this is plus two, this is plus two, this is plus two, that's plus two. Everyone see how I just kind of made the steps that way, right? Okay. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to figure out, one, what the change, the rate of change is. What is my slope? What is my slope? How much does it change between each week, each day, each hour? My B value is just going to be my initial value. Because think about this. If I am at x is equal to 0, here's x equal to 3, 2, 1, 0. At x is equal to 0, I'm on this y-axis. So when I plug in x for 0 here, what happens to this term? Goodbye. Anything times 0 would be 0. So when you plug in x for 0, you're going to find your initial value, your b value. So we know for sure. So again, at the time 0, I'm at my y-axis because this is time. This is time. So at time 0, I'm right here. And time progresses as I get more money. Okay. So. We know that the rate of change is going to be how much did I increase between each segment of time? Two. And we are going to find the initial value. Really, it's just going to be our B value, or it's when time is zero. Because at time is zero, you're on your y axis, that's our B value, our y intercept. Okay? So let's look at that's kind of a, my, my sad allowance story over there. Let's go to this one now. Because for this one, you are going to earn money for every game you play. Wouldn't that be cool if that was how it was in here? Game day, you're like, getting some money. That, that's all you get. You get two bills. That's it. You can make it rain two drops. Whoa. Okay. Coming back. Game zero. How much money do you have before you even start? Five bucks. This column over here is just the difference. That's helping us find the, how much you earned each game, right? It's just the difference from how much you had before and how much you've earned. So you see here that after one game, now you have six bucks in your pocket. What's the difference? How much money did you earn? You just go six. That's your current amount. Minus out the prior amount. You see? If you had 20 bucks, right, and the next week you had 25 bucks, how could you find the difference of those? 25 minus 20. That's it. That's all this column is. Okay, you find the difference from each step up. Okay, so six minus five is one dollar. You got one dollar. Seven. So the second game, you have seven bucks after the second game. You had six before, so seven minus six, one dollar. After the third game, you have eight bucks. You started with seven 
after the second game, so it's 8 minus 7. What is that? One dollar. One dollar. Okay. Do you see something consistent? Just like my, my allowance over here, the steps are the same, right? What are the steps going to be in this? How much do you earn each unit of time? One dollar. So anytime you have this, anytime you have that, this is the rate of change, right? Rate of change. Essentially, that's our slope. Okay, it's 1 over 1. So I'm going to look here and say, well, from the data in the table, I found that the change, the rate of change is $1 per game. So watch. 1. Okay. All you're doing is seeing the steps in time, the steps in time, how much did you increase. And if they're the same steps, one, one game, $1. One game, one dollar. One game, one dollar. You know your slope is one. Okay. What is my initial amount? Five bucks. What do I look for? When my x value is zero, the game at zero. When you haven't played at all, you got five bucks in your pocket. Five bucks. Okay. So we'll do a couple more examples. We're going to do like three examples. But right now, thumbs up, sideways down. What do you think? Okay, not bad. All right, let's look at this. We're going to have other scenarios. We're going to have a different scenario here, but let's not worry about it too much. If you're not given that initial amount, what are you going to do? You're going to plug in one point so you can solve for your initial value, your B value. Just keep that in your head. If you don't know your B value, we're going to be able to plug in a point to find that B value. Now, but let's look and do this part first. So after two games, you got seven dollars in your pocket. After two games, you got seven, three games, nine, four games, 11, five games, 13. So the difference, how could we find the difference if we only have information about game two? We don't know what happened in game one. You may be able to deduce at this point, well, I can just subtract that. I can think about it that way, right? If you're not able to conclude it that way, we would just leave that as a question mark for now. We don't know. But this we can figure out. After game three, you have nine bucks. After game two, you had seven. So seven, nine minus seven, we find the difference from the prior time. And what do we have? Two. two. What should I put here? I want you to fill in these boxes and get your answers over here. So fill in these boxes. What's going to be the difference subtracted here? What do you think? Go ahead and fill those in. That should just take a moment. All right. Uh, Lorette, what goes what goes in this box? Perfect. Which is two. Uh, let's see. Quinn, what goes in this box? Perfect. You're just subtracting the one before it get two. All right. What do we have here? Do we have a consistent slope? Yes. Okay. Remember, today today is our focus on linear equations. Linear equations have a consistent slope, right? Any line, you can make steps, and it would be the same kind of steps. You wouldn't end up with, like, this one's a bigger step, that one's a small one, that's bigger. Linear equations are going to have the same slope. So if we look here, we can go in here and put y is equal to 2x plus b. We weren't given game zero amount. We didn't figure out before how much money we started with. So this is where this comes in play. This right here, we can plug in one of our points, because these are just points, these are points, an x and a y value, points. Okay. We can plug in one of our x and y's, because look, if I have this right here, I've got three things I don't know, but I could figure out, I could figure out what I can plug in for x and y, what would be left over if I plug in values for x and y? B. So we can find B that way. Okay. So pick a point. One, two, three, or four. Isabel, what do you think? Two. Two. We're going to do this one. Could we do it with any other point? Yeah. Because all those points we know are on the line. We can use any for this purpose. Let's plug in nine for y, three for x. 
minus three or six, I think. B is equal to three. So what we just concluded was our final equation up here is going to be y is equal to 2x plus 3. Question? <laughs> no, 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 my stomach just grumbled. Oh, really? Yeah. You need a granola bar? Yes. Get it. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> It was that disruptive. Huh? It was, it was oh, you got to go that way, though. What are you doing? I'm throwing my gun. Oh, I see. Thought you were going to cut in front of the video. Never. All right. Thumbs up, sideways, down after scene two. It's not too much difference, right? Everybody see that we can plug in any point into the equation if we're making it about that same set of points. So when I plug it in, I don't know B. I could plug it in X and Y to solve for B and then just put it back into the place where it belongs. Put it where it belongs. Okay. Guys, get open your uh, your workbook now. Page 185. This is the last bit. 185. Shoot. Bless you. This is what they were talking about. Isn't that a great sound? <laughs> Have you ever heard that sound before? I think it's great. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're going to do that. I need somebody to read it really clearly for Starburst who can read. Perfect. Here you go for it. Our lunch. The starting balance of Anna's account is one thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. She takes out thirty dollars out of her account each month. How much money is it is in her account after one week and three months? Find an explicit question to represent the balance of one month. Okay. Good. Spends thirty bucks per what? Per month? Okay, let's make our table. So we have, instead of games, we're just talking about months because she's taking out some money. One, two, three. Let's call this the, uh, it's going to be the money in the bank. It's going to be our difference. All right, after zero months, how much does she have? After zero months, Caden? 1,250. Perfect. The difference kind of doesn't matter because there's nothing before zero months. That's just how much she has. Now, she spends $30 every month. So after one month, what does she have? Yeah. 1,220. And we can do this. We could say, well, what's 1,220 minus the 1,500 or 1,250? What is that? Negative 30. Now, does that make sense? If you spend 30 bucks and you had a total in your account, you spend 30 bucks, are you adding $30? You're subtracting $30. So the rate seems like every month we're going to subtract out 30 bucks. Right? Clarifying question? Um, well, yes. Great. Um, can you write, can you, without doing the, you, can you just not do the uh, table? That part? Just write that as, um, y equals 1,250x minus 30. And then you can just graph it and then just hit every single point. But you had actually the m and the b mixed up. Mm -hmm. So I think after you see this one process, you'll see where those things naturally fit. I want you to make, this is like a graphic organizer to help organize all your thoughts. I want you to figure out one graphic organizer that works if this one doesn't. So just make it real basic, okay? Maybe, maybe instead of doing the difference, if you could see the difference every time, you just put negative 30 here, three columns, you could write those out. So that's how you show your work. This is how you show your work. That's good. You can already see it, though. I had this much after one month. How about after two months? How much am I going to have? Good. Can I just put the differences? I subtracted out 30 for that month. 
How about after month three? One, one? 60. 60. I subtracted out 30. So what is my rate of change? Yeah. Rate of change triangle is just change, and it's 30 bucks, negative. That's my rate. I think we actually have enough now. So this is where I want you guys to see what you're thinking. What were you thinking? We were thinking the opposite of this. Fill in those boxes with what belongs there. Go ahead and do it. I think we have enough info. What goes in those boxes? What's my rate of change? Slope. What's my initial? You see it? Okay. Jordan, help me out. What's my slope? What's my rate of change? Uh, you have 30. 30. What is my initial amount? Like 100, Everyone good with that? How we found it? Remember, this is just how much it changes between your time values. It's your initial value. Okay. Now, next week we're going to figure out, uh, if I said right now, well, how much will she have after 14 months? You'd have to make a lot of table to it. Or you can use what's called sequences. Next week we're going to learn about sequences. Basically, if you're given like the 61st term, you can figure out what the zero term is from this process. Okay, that's next. Yeah. Couldn't you just write the graph out and then look at 14 on the graph? Boom! That's perfect. You could use the graph if you graphed it perfectly with graph paper. You would be able to find it graphically. Sometimes precision is a little tricky with that because it might not line up with an exact level of Y, but good idea. It works. Can't you just put 14 in for X? And then you would be able to find uh, how much you have left for 14 months. Perfect. That would be the output. Now, if you have the linear equation set up, that the process we did here was a set of the linear equation. Next, what the next process is, you just know this. <laughs> Second step is just this, and you'll be able to, just using sequences, find that. So you're right, Jude. Jude Corden knows everything. That's good. Actually, I'm going to give both of you guys candy for that. Yes, that's a perfect segue. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up sideways down, guys. What do you think? Love seeing it. You guys are great. All right. Uh, let's just tell the folks to subscribe. Let's do a whisper, creepy whisper. What do you think? Subscribe. One, three, one, two, three.